Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Party Card Game Review for the game Tipsy Antics. This is a 3 to 10 player game. It's roughly ages 18 and up, unless you're drinking, then whatever the average age of drinking or legal age of drinking is. Uh, and it takes about 20 minutes or more to play. And in the game Tipsy Antics, you're going to be drawing cards from a deck of cards, and you're going to enact actions. You'll either be drawing a card, or you'll be playing a card and drawing a card. And the game will end fairly simply. When somebody grabs a leaking cast, that is one of the number of cards needed based on the number of players to end the game. Four players, four of these guys pop out, that will end the game. All the while enacting actions, unique mini games, and events that all involve drinking some type of substance. The game ends when the leaking casts have been drawn, but up until then, you're just playing the game and having some fun. We'll talk about how to set the game up, how to play, and of course, my review. To begin set for the game, Tipsy Antics, the first thing you do is you take the main deck, remove all the leaking cast cards, as well as all the mini game cards from the deck. From there, based on the number of players playing the game, you will take a number of these leaking cast cards and you will shuffle them into the deck here. Additionally, based on the mini games you're able to or want to play, you can also take those mini games that you've selected and also add those to the deck. Any additional leaking cast cards and mini game cards can be set aside for another time to play with either more players or if you want to include more mini games because some of them do require additional setup, like beer pong for instance. After the deck has been set up and then shuffled, the game is ready to begin. And that's it, nobody starts with any cards or anything, it's just a game of drawing, luck, strategy, and a little bit of drinking as well. Okay, so playing the game Tipsy Antics. Well, this is more of a party game that doesn't really involve a winner or a loser. It's more about keeping the party going. You're just trying to enjoy a fun night out with friends, maybe coming back from the bar and you come back and you play at home, or you're just at a friend's get together. You bring this deck of cards and you play it up until the casts empty out of the deck, or if you guys are just unable to play anymore for whatever reason. In this game, you're only going to need really the deck of cards, any type of beverage that you'd like, whether it be water or otherwise, and maybe some seltzer water, and a glass, and then based on the mini games you're playing, any additives that would be required to play those mini games, which is why you can kind of set them aside or add them to the deck. To begin the game, you're going to need to do one of two things. Either A, you will draw a card and you will pass, or B, you will be able to play a card, put it into the discard pile, enact whatever the card says, and then draw a new card. Some cards are events, and others are mini games. These cards take effect instantly, and you're going to do whatever the card says. The events are specified, and so are the mini games, and they're detailed in the rulebook of Tipsy Antics, based on whatever the mini game or event is. Some of them are pretty straightforward, other ones you might not know, and so you'll go ahead and dive into the rulebook and learn the little mini game. They're all fairly simple drinking games that most of you have played before, whether it be in uh, college or maybe after that. <clears throat> And after that, you're simply going to pass. So I played my card, I will now draw, and I pass to the next player. Now they will draw a card, or they will play a card from their hand, and then draw a card and pass. Pretty simple, right? Drawing a card, or playing a card and drawing a card. And of course, eventually players are gonna run into the cards called the leaking cast cards. These cards here will say something like, display this card right away and take a shot. Like all of them will say that. And it's a way in which you can end the game uh, one way or another. Uh, and the majority of the way the games are gonna end hopefully is by drawing a number of casts equal to a number of players. That being said, there's also a bunch of other cards in this game. Uh, like, for instance, you'll have event cards like Say My Name. It's a popular drinking game. Or maybe you'll be using Tipsy Antics, the card that says you can play two matching cards to force a player to have a drink. Super, show this card now and take a drink. Or Swap, a wild ninja uses a swapping ninjutsu to force another player to drink instead of you. Also, a lot of basic action cards will allow you to basically have a player or players swap drinks, drinks, mixed drinks, all that kind of stuff. Uh, ways to stop players from drawing casts, put them back into the deck. Uh, ways that will allow you to stop an action from another player, so that this can be played at any time that's not just on your turn. Cards will specify if they're not just one of those cards that you draw and then play, or a card that you're, you draw and have to play. And that is the idea of the game. Uh, the luck and skill portion comes into the mini games of uh, tipsy antics. The game is pretty simple as how to set it up and how to play. So we'll go into a few of the unique mini games 
Like, for instance, there's beer pong. Beer pong involves cups and balls and, of course, drinks. And you'll be setting it up on a table, maybe one like this here, and throwing balls into cups, scoring the cups, and then drinking based on the cups that you score. You can add any rules to this that you would like. <laughs> Perhaps you're going to be playing the game Blow Me, which is you fill a glass, a cup with your choice of beverage, and place a deck of cards on top. Uh, players take turns blowing cards off the cup. The player who blows off the last card loses. And it tells you also like what additional things you need for the game, like a glass cup and a deck of cards. One breath, blow one turn, and loser must drink the cup. <clears throat> okay, pretty simple, right? Uh, chandelier's another one. There's flip cup from uh, so Always Sunny. Liar's dice, rolling dice, hiding the dice, and declaring what you believe the entire total sum of the number to be between all players. Also from Pirates of the Caribbean. The numbers game, the castle game, uh, the stack cup game, and uh, Titanic. There's also event cards that would be taking place, and they all state what they do, but they're also available here in the rules, like Say My Name. Players must address each other by name before speaking, and if a player fails to do so, they take a drink. This is a drinking game. It's pretty straightforward. Draw the casks and the game, or stop playing when you no longer can play anymore. Enjoy your beverages and just have fun with friends, because that's what really matters about a game like this. So, Tipsy Antics is a drinking card game. It doesn't really involve winning or losing in the same sense as the main game does, but there are many games and events that take place where if you're drinking, you're probably losing. It's a game that can go on for pretty much as long as you want. You can always add more leaking casts if you would like to continue play. And when you add new players, you can also shuffle in another game, uh, another cast to the game, so it'll allow more players to join when they're coming in. It's a good way to experience a lot of college drinking games that you may or may not have played before with a new group of people, a larger group of people, and kind of invest in a unique aspect of kind of King's Cup meets the <laughs> Flip Cup meets Beer Pong meets Waterfalls and so on and so forth, all played in a singular deck. Yes, it does require you to have additional assets like cups and pong balls and a table and maybe a stack of cards, but for the most part, these are a few things that are fairly easily accessible. If you don't like the idea of them not including that, maybe in the Kickstarter that's included, that'd be probably pretty nice to have something separate that they can order, but it's these things are so easily available that if you don't mind that aspect or if you're just going to a party like me pulling this game out and playing it, I happen to have everything for all the mini games available to me at my disposal simply here in the house. And I imagine for the most part, if you're a drinker or have had parties at your house, then that's probably not too big of an issue. Uh, the cards are also this nice kind of waterproof aspect, so you're not going to have to really worry about the cards getting damp and destroyed, and that's perfect for drinking games. In fact, I always suggest that you have these. Uh, the art for the card is basically what you'd imagine, a bunch of beautiful little cups that are fighting or working together or just straight up drinking. They're drink cups involved with drinking. It's fun. It's cute. It's straightforward artwork. Uh, the graphic design is pretty basic. You got the name of the card, the art, and then what the card does. Some of the cards are events, in which case you can go into the rule book and learn the event and play the game. And maybe it's with a new player. I love the idea of added additional players to a game like this where you can all come together and split off. I love the idea of making house rules to games like this because then you can start diversifying the house into unique player groups with unique mini games and having them all come back for the big shebang. Overall, a very fun drinking card game. That being said, this is a drinking game. Realistically, you could play with water or soda. I'm sure you probably will not have fun. This is specifically designated for those of you who enjoy having drinks, enjoy having a party, and a group of people. Three players? Nah. Four? Maybe. Upwards of that? Yeah, that's where Tipsy Antics shines. You obviously want a lot of players playing this game. I think even probably four would work just fine. Uh, but you definitely want more players. The more players, the better. The more interactions, the more conversation, the more social aspect that you'll have for the game. And straight up just enjoying a card game like this is going to entail music and fun drinks, mixers, and all the favors that a party would entail that has these type of beverages. Yes, I, I, I like games like these. There's a lot of fun. I remember my friends used to play a Pokemon training board game in which you can download this online somewhere, but it was basically the uh, Pokemon board. Look, I kind of like Monopoly, but it went all the way around and you're just moving, you roll the die, you move, and then you battle Pokemon by rolling dice and drinking. And then you move on from there and you skip turns. It's kind of like the most basic roll to move, but the idea is you get to the very end of the table and 
Your objective is to defeat the Elite Four by just drinking enough to not, to not fall asleep, as they would say. Uh, this kind of has that feel to it, where that's the way you lose in this game. It either ends or players are like, okay, okay, no more, no more. The game Tipsy Antics has defeated me. And at first, I didn't see the fun in those type of games because I wasn't playing them. I was like, eh, it's not for me. I'll just be drinking mine straight. But then after starting to play the games, I actually really enjoyed them. It kind of adds this extra appeal of socialization within the game that I normally wouldn't get just on its own. Or the fact that like sometimes I won't like a specific mini link game. Maybe I don't like Pier Beer Pong or Flip Cup or whatever. This kind of adds those extra added mini games, those events that are added to King's Cup, and it's all put to attached into one game mode that people can come back to and play, leave the game, join the game whenever, and it works really well. Overall, a drinking party game. Those of you who are like this type of thing, you're gonna know what this is, you're gonna understand the concept, and it's gonna be something you wanna pick up, or it's not. It's, there's no kind of middle ground here. You either like what you see here, and you're gonna enjoy the game. If you're not, then you're just not. Overall for me, it's a solid, fun little drinking party game. It works really well, and it mixes really well with a group of people together at a house playing party drinking games. That's so, out. take a look and pick it up if you're interested. Thank you guys so much for watching another Unfiltered Gamer party card game drinking game review for, uh, for Tipsy Antics. If you're interested in picking the game up, there's a link down below. It's currently available for you to go ahead and back if you're interested in the game. If you think we did a good job, if you watched more than one of our videos here uh, on the channel, you can go ahead and hit that subscribe button, bell notification button, and maybe leave a comment as well. If you played a game like this before, if you want to play this game, go ahead and do so. Let us know what you think. Uh, overall, cool little drinking party game. Art's cute. Like, all this is just a really cool idea for a very specific audience that I think is going to work really well in certain groups. And I know one person specifically just from playing it previously, um, who is going to enjoy this and who already wants to back one copy at least. So there, there you go. There is definitely a big audience for this game with the right crowd and the right marketing. I think this is going to do pretty well. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to drinking with you next time.